Hello, this is Mrs. Butcher. This video is about graphing cube root functions. And your joke today doesn't have anything to do with the lesson, but um, this was from a test. You guys took this test. You had this bonus question a while back. This was one of my favorite answers I've ever gotten on this. I had to save it. Let's start with the parent function for any cube root function. f of x equals the cube root of x. And let's graph that parent function. I'm not going to be super perfect with this, but the cubed root of 0 is 0. The cubed root of 1 is 1. And then the next perfect cube that we have is not until 8. So I'm not even going to bother with all the numbers in between. I'm going to go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. So it's kind of like the square root. A little bit um, less, uh, I don't know, less steep if you can use the word steep. However, you can take the cube root of negative numbers. So the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. And then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The cube root of negative 8 would be negative 2. So it actually goes both directions. It's like a big O spread out S. When I have you plot cube roots, I need a minimum of five points. I need one, two, three, but if those are the only points you graph, that's just a straight line. So then I need the next two out, four, five. And let's talk about the domain and range of this real quick. The domain, arrow all the way to the left, arrow all the way to the right, no breaks in the middle, tells me it's negative infinity to infinity, or all real numbers. The range of this, it's going forever to the left, but it's also heading downward at the same time. This one's heading upward at the same time. So our range is also negative infinity to infinity. And then our transformed function, um, exactly the same thing as when we did the square root. So I'm not going to go over what every letter does again. Remember, we have plus or minus a. You can have a plus or a minus b. Make sure you factor it out, and then you can have an H and a K, or a C and a D, depending on what letters you want to use. All right. All right, so here you go. I want you to graph f of x equals negative 2 cube root of x plus 3 minus 1. First, I want you to describe the transformations, so let's do that. The negative comes first. That's going to reflect it over the x-axis. That means that your S-curve, which looks like this, will now look like this. The 2 gives it a vertical stretch by 2, so now it's not going to be as stretched out of an S, wait, this way, as it was before. I don't have a B in here. Thank goodness, I hate B, right? This plus 3 shifts the whole thing to the left 3 units, and the minus 1 takes it down 1. So there's two ways of doing this. You could just start plugging in values and make a table, or you could realize, okay, I'm going to shift it. If I reflect, I don't do anything to my middle point here at 0, 0. This is what we call the, the uh, inflection point, because that's where it changes from curving one way to the other. When we reflect it, it doesn't change. When we stretch it, it doesn't change. But then we can go left 3 and down 1, and so our inflection point moves to negative 3, negative 1. And then we can go from there. We can say, all right, well, I know the next two points are always one on either side, so I'm going to plug in a negative 2. So if I put a negative 2 plus 3 is 1, cube root of 1 is 1, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, minus 1 is negative 3. So I have a point at negative 2, negative 3. All right, if I plugged in negative 4, I would have negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2 minus 1 is 1. So I have a point at negative 4, 1. So you see now that it's stretched out. My graph is not drawn nice and pretty to scale, but this is 2 down and this is 2 up, whereas before it was 1 and 1. All right, and then remember we need um, 5 points. So I need to know, I need to put the x in that's going to make this 8. That would be 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. The cube root of 8 is 2. 
2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 there. And then I also need what would make it negative 8, and that's going to have to be negative 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Negative 11 plus 3 is negative 8. Cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Times negative 2 is 4. Minus 1 is 3. 1, 2, 3. Over here. So now we have the same thing as our parent function, only it's reflected over the x-axis. It's stretched vertically by 2, shifted left 3, and down 1. The domain of this, it's still all real numbers. Negative infinity to infinity. And the range is also still negative infinity to infinity. So none of you better get the domain and range of cubics wrong, please. Let's do another example, just to be sure we know what we're doing. f of x equals the cubed root of 3 parentheses x plus 1 and then plus 2. Note that this is in parentheses. They've already factored out the 3 for you. If that wasn't there, you would make sure you factored out the 3. So what we know is happening is this 3 on the inside here is our horizontal, and then it's 3, so that's greater than 1, so that's going to be a compression by a third. Make sure you write horizontal, compression by a third. This plus 1 shifts it to the left 1 unit, and this plus 2 shifts it up 2 units. So just like we did before, Remember, okay, your inflection point is going to move left one up two. So our middle point, our inflection point is right here. Then we can just start plugging things in because we can plug in a zero. Zero plus one is one. Three times one is three, and then we need the cubed root of three plus two. So I just, I don't know exactly where that is, but I know it's going to be a little bit more than two. Oops, didn't mean to move that. Cube root of three. It's a fraction plus 2. You notice that it is shrunk down. It's compressed by a third. If I plugged in a negative 2, I'd have negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Cube root of negative 3 plus 2. So I'm basically going down a little bit here. 2 minus the square root of 3. Um, yeah, this looks like crap. Sorry. There's my three middle points. And then we need another one. Um, I'm going to actually try to find a good one this time, and I'm going to use, let's see, I have a cube root, and I need a multiple of 30, so I'm going to use 27. I'm going to say, well, I want this to be 27. So I could use an 8, right? I'm going to plug in an 8. Because 8 plus 1 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, cube root of 27 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5. So I have this, and then if I needed that to be a negative number, that means that this would need to be a negative 27. So that would be a negative 9, that would be a negative 10. Negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9, times 3 is negative 27, cube root of that is negative 3, plus 2 is negative 1 over here. So there's my 5 points minimum. There's my graph. It is compressed horizontally by a third, which means it's pretty stretched out there. And it's left one and up two. Domain, all real numbers. Range, all real numbers. All right, one more problem. This time, I want you to go ahead and sketch this out. Put all the points in their proper places. And then I want you to write the cubed root expression that is shown on this graph. So here's what we're going to do. We've done this before with other functions. It's the same process. We know that our form is y equals a cube root x minus h plus k. We're not going to deal with a b. If you are, I'll tell you. But um, if it's not, I mean, if, if, it does, if it isn't even mentioned, then just assume no b. All right, so now I'm going to go with my inflection point, that's always going to be your hk. Okay, And then you can pick another point, any other point that you want. Um, I'm going to go with this one. 
So 6, 3, 3, 6, sorry, 3, 6. And I'm going to plug them in. So my y is 6, don't know a, cube root, x is 3, h is 2, and then plus, forget all that, plus k, remember that's afterwards, so plus 4. And I'm going to have 6 equals 3 minus 2 is 1. Cube root of 1 is 1. So a plus 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. So we're going to solve for a. And then we're going to rewrite the equation. y or f of x equals a is 2 cube root x and then use h and k. So x minus 2 and then plus 4 just like we've done with all the other types of functions so far this year. So that's all I have for you. I will see you in class tomorrow. Bye.